Hello, Matt here from chemistrystudent.com. In this video, we're going to look at entropy. We're going to talk about what entropy actually is, where the units for entropy come from, and why entropy is important when looking at energy changes for a reaction. Entropy changes and using standard entropies have been covered in a separate video. Check the links in the description below. Before we talk in detail about entropy, there are a few essential ideas you need to be comfortable with. Enthalpy is the heat content or thermal energy store of a substance or system. All molecules and substances have thermal energy stored up inside them, as when some of their energy is released, it can only flow out in the form of heat. Enthalpy change is defined as heat energy change, kilojoules per mole, measured at a constant pressure. It is impossible to know the exact enthalpy of a substance. It is possible, however, to measure how the enthalpy of a substance changes during a reaction or process. This means in chemistry, we work with enthalpy changes, shown as delta H, rather than total enthalpy values. Substances can exist in three states, solids, liquids, and gases, <laughs> ignoring plasma here. In solids, particles are close together and in fixed positions. In liquids, particles are further apart and, although still touching each other, are free to move around. In gases, particles are constantly randomly moving in all directions and can exist anywhere within their container. A group of gas molecules will always spread out to fill their container. Recap done, let's go. I'm going to start this video in a slightly odd way. Because the truth is, there are a few areas in chemistry that you are presented with at this level of study that don't get fully explained or examined in detail. This often leads students to great confusion and they end up just writing down what they are told something is and they remember and practice how to answer certain questions and then move on, without ever actually understanding the very thing they are answering questions about. Entropy is definitely one of these areas. As much as I love chemistry and like to believe all students are desperately trying to understand the world of chemistry as much as possible, I know the reality is many of you are trying to keep your heads above water and just want to do as well as you can in your exams. Because of this, I've split this video into two sections. The first section gives you an outline of entropy as it is likely to be examined in your course and the second section gives you more of a breakdown and introduction as to what entropy really is and why it has the units that it does. I strongly advise you to watch part one and part two to help you understand what is going on with entropy and why you need to study it in order to understand why reactions happen. That being said, let's go. Part one, what your textbook probably says. Entropy is described as being a measure of disorder. The entropy of the universe will always tend to increase whenever a reaction or process occurs. What this is really telling us is that the more ways you can arrange particles in a system, the greater its potential disorder and the higher the entropy that system has. Obviously, the more particles you have in a system, the greater the number of ways you can arrange them all, meaning a higher entropy for systems with more particles in. But it isn't just the number of particles that has an impact on the potential disorder of a system. The easiest way to see this is of solids, liquids and gases. There are a limited number of ways to arrange particles in solids, meaning they have a low level of disorder and a low entropy. In a liquid, particles are free to move around much more, and this means there are lots of possible ways the particles can be arranged meaning a higher level of disorder than a solid and a higher entropy. In gases, the particles can basically be anywhere within their container, meaning there is a huge number of possible ways the particles can be arranged, given a very high level of entropy compared to solids and liquids. The less the particles can move in a system, the less the potential disorder of that system. Think of a school classroom with children in. The slower they move in the classroom, the more ordered it is. The faster they run around, the more disordered and chaotic it becomes, even though the number of children is the same. As the movement of particles increases with temperature, the higher the temperature of a system, the greater its potential disorder, meaning entropy increases with increases in temperature. 
A warm gas will have a higher entropy than a cooler gas, assuming the same number of particles for both. For reasons that will be explained in part two of this video, the entropy of a system is linked to stability and energy, meaning it is measured with joules, the unit for energy. We've also seen that entropy changes with temperature, meaning this also has to be considered, given entropy the unit of joules per Kelvin, essentially energy per degree Kelvin, temperature. For standard entropies, we also measure entropy per mole, amount of particles in a system. It is represented with the letter S. It is important to remember here that the unit of energy in entropy is joules, unlike enthalpy, where the unit of energy used is kilojoules. For reasons that will also be explained in part two of this video, the total entropy of the universe must always tend to increase when a reaction or process occurs. Even if the change in entropy is very small, it must always increase. But be careful, the entropy of a system, a group of reacting particles for example, can decrease in a reaction. It is the entropy of the entire universe that must always increase. The entropy of a system can decrease if the entropy of the rest of the universe increases more than the system decreases for a particular reaction or process. This is why entropy, as well as enthalpy, must be considered when looking at the feasibility of a reaction in chemistry. Feasibility here being whether a reaction can actually happen in reality, so whether it's allowed to happen. That's a basic and hopefully useful outline for entropy at this level. It does leave some pretty big gaps though, and doesn't all quite fully add up. Part two, what actually is entropy? I'm going to start this section by first of all stating that entropy is essentially a mathematical entity and comes from statistical probability. This isn't actually as rare as you think in chemistry. Even electron orbitals are essentially mathematical and are based on probabilities. But this is why models of entropy are hard to understand and calling it a measure of disorder can be misleading. The second thing to mention is that entropy only exists when you have a group of particles. One individual particle doesn't ever have entropy. A group of particles can collectively have an associated entropy. This is why we usually refer to entropies per mole of a substance or particle. One particle by itself is unable to have entropy. The reason for this is that entropy is based on how energy can be shared or distributed amongst particles within a system. All particles have energy, and this energy is made up of lots of small bits of energy that can't be broken down into smaller amounts, almost like tiny units of energy. The particles in a system are constantly sharing these bits or units of energy between them, meaning different particles can actually have different amounts of energy at any one time. Here is the key thing though, the more possible ways there are of arranging that energy, amongst the particles, the more likely it is that the energy will be evenly spread out or distributed amongst them all. This is why entropy is sometimes referred to as dispersal energy in a system. The thing is, the more the energy spreads out, the less useful it becomes. Think about it. Energy is only really useful when it's in one place in high amounts. The energy that you use to boil water for a cup of tea is only useful when it's concentrated on heating that small amount of water. Spread out into your entire room, it doesn't really do anything useful at all. This means that if there are fewer possible ways of arranging the energy that particles in the system have, it will be less spread out and it is more likely that there will be useful energy available that can do things, like heat up another substance for example. If the number of possible ways of arranging the energy increases, however, more of this energy will be evenly spread out and less of it will be available as useful energy. The energy is still there in the system, it's just less of it is now usable. The spreading out of this energy means the system becomes more stable as the energy the particles have is spread out more. It isn't tightly packed in one area. The problem is now the energy can't be transferred easily out of the system as heat. It is essentially useless energy shared amongst all the particles in the system. We describe this useless energy as entropy. 
This is why joules are used in entropy units. We are measuring energy. So, as the number of potential arrangements of particles or disorder in a system increases, entropy also increases. But it isn't actually the particles we are interested in. It is how the energy the particles have gets shared or distributed between them all. This is why entropy changes with temperature, as when temperature increases, there is more energy available that can be shared between the particles, meaning a greater chance that some of it will be spread out. Entropy. Because of this, the entropy of a substance is based on temperature, meaning Kelvin has to be included in its units. To condense all of this down then, Enthalpy, the energy content of a system, is made up of useful energy that can flow in or out of a substance's heat energy, and entropy. Entropy is the energy that a system has that can't flow in or out of it as heat energy, meaning it is effectively unavailable to do anything. The higher the entropy content of a system, the more stable it is as the energy is spread out more. In order for any reaction or process to occur, stability of the universe has to increase, and this is why the entropy of the universe must increase during a reaction or process. Be careful though, the entropy of an individual system doesn't have to increase, only the entropy of the whole universe. For example, you can take a gas system that has a high entropy and put it under high pressure to force it to become a liquid, lower entropy. The entropy of the system may have decreased here, but the energy required to pressurize the gas will have had to have come from another process, in which the entropy must have increased in some way. As long as the entropy increase for the rest of the universe is greater than the decrease in the entropy of the system, the reaction is feasible. This is why entropy is so important to chemists, as it isn't just the enthalpy changes, in a reaction we have to look at, it is also entropy, and both enthalpy and entropy change have to be considered at looking at whether a reaction is able to occur. So, to summarise. Simple definition. Entropy is described as being a measure of disorder, and is shown with a capital S. The total entropy of the universe will always increase as a result of a reaction or process. The greater the potential disorder of a system, the greater its entropy. One mole of particles in liquid state will have a higher entropy than one mole of the same particles in solid state. Note that it is a system or group of particles that can have entropy, never one particle. Entropy is a mathematical entity and comes from statistical probability. This is why models are hard to understand and a measure of disorder can be misleading. If there are lots of possible ways of arranging the energy that a group of particles have, there is a greater chance of the particles arranging themselves where the energy is spread out as much as possible, making them more stable overall. As energy spreads out or disperses in a system, it becomes less useful. In fact, useless, as it can no longer be transferred out of the system as heat to do work. This energy is described as entropy. Units for entropy are joules per kelvin per mole. Entropy can be thought of as a measure of the energy within a system that isn't useful for anything. Temperature changes the possible arrangements of energy within a system, meaning it changes the amount of useful energy available. Increased temperature means increased entropy. As entropy is a property a group of particles have, it is measured based on the number of particles in a system. The standard unit for number of particles in chemistry is the mole, meaning standard units for entropy are joules per kelvin per mole. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out other relevant videos in the links given in the description below and visit chemistrystudent.com for free notes and revision materials.